down which you last one? White Lock. Yes. We'll show you some of the biggest songs. Okay, uh, no guests called in to be on the agenda, so we've got a set of minutes to approve. Um, I just caught this at the very end here, was joint uh, project with Mantuway, not in Mantle. Mantua? Mantua, Montuno, like my kids used to call it. Mm -hmm. So, that was the only correction I had. Any others? Yeah, I didn't see any. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. PJ? Yeah, but just one correction. Gene? Yes. Mike? Yes. Okay. Second meeting of the month. Chief uh, John Phillips is here to give his report from the Alder and Volunteer Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. EMS calls for from January to end of September were 376. Last year, was, at that time, it was 372. Fire calls was uh, 307. Last year, it was 264. For a total of 683. Last year, within 637. Up a little bit. Mutual aid given is 147. Last year, it was 163. Mutual aid received 50, last year was 40, total transports is 260, last year was 268, total non-transports is 151, last year was 118, total transfers to other agencies is zero, last year was six, total patients is 411, last year was 392. And our back-to-back -back calls are running at 26.2%. Tip from our report. Okay, anyone on the board here? Any questions for Chief? Anybody in the audience? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we'll move into our pretty light agenda tonight, so we're going to move into our reports, start at the other end of Mike. I don't even have any anything to report to me. I don't answer my time. <clears throat> okay, I have a couple things. Uh, last Tuesday, uh, Chief and I attended a seminar put on by uh, ODOT. It was called the Incident Management Seminar at the new uh, Commissioner's Building. And ODOT had all their representatives there. And a lot of this, and Chief, you can correct me if I'm wrong on some of this stuff, but this whole thing was brought on because of the accident with the train wreck and the spill, and uh, they just wanted to update us on if there is an accident, a problem, a spill, uh, whatever, who to contact, uh, what things they are in charge of, and so it was pretty uh, informative of what yes. they gave us. and. Uh, a couple of things that I walked away with that's kind of startling is that every six days a tow truck driver is killed on the on the freeways here picking up a, a wreck or what have you and every 23 days or months 23 months or days days, a, days a, an ODOT worker is killed on the road working that's just Ohio. So, that's just Ohio. Wow. So you yeah. need to be careful when you see accidents. You know, they said a lot of the, the biggest problems happen with rubberneckers where there's an accident on this side of the freeway and people are watching coming the other way, cause an accident going that way. And now they've given, uh, uh, I'm having a brain freeze, people who check on people who are severely hurt or dead, first responder. No, no, the... Uh, Corner. The coroner. Oh, sorry. The coroner. They've now given coroners the flashing lights to put on their cars, which they've never had before because we had a situation where there was a fatality and an accident, and it took the coroner an hour and a half to get to the scene because of the backup and the problem on the road. So if you see a guy with a light on his car trying to bypass <coughs> you, it's probably...
probably the coroner. So that was, like I said, it was an enlightening meeting. Uh, they had everybody from the new departments. Yeah, I know if you notice they built that new ODOT plant in Middlefield right before the Giant Eagle. The rep from there was there, and uh, we got to meet all their reps here and what they're in charge of. And like I said, it was very informative, and the chief and I were both there. And the only other thing I have, and it was just mentioned here a minute ago, I saw that Al Raybeck, who has been a longtime Auburn resident, here passed away on Saturday. Al was uh, synonymous with the word Kenston. I mean, he was the football coach from the 60s on. He was the athletic director. He was extremely involved in Kenston schools, not only with his kids, but with his grandkids. And uh, he was 88 years old. And unfortunately, they're dropping like flies. We had Ray Simpson at the last meeting, and now we have... Al Ray back at this one, so our our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and what have you. So that's all I have. Okay. Um, yeah, a buddy of mine said way back when he said the old timers just keep dying off. I said, yeah, but they keep making new ones. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Um, I got nothing that's not on the agenda. A lot of uh, things that were going to happen tonight, our prosecutor kind of asked us to hold off for the next meeting. So I'm going to pass it along to Dan. Okay. God damn, please have something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, since our last meeting, I processed 26 payments, 20 warrants, and Six electronic payments for a total of sixty-four thousand seven hundred and eighty-nine dollars and seventy-two cents. The only other thing I have is a few months ago, I <clears throat> brought to the attention of the board our our uh, broker Burnham and Flower approached me with a proposal for our health care for those employees that are of Medicare age. And because we're, I think we, because we have less than 50 employees, um, those of us <coughs> on Medicare have to have Medicare as our primary <coughs> and we utilize Medical Mutual as our supplement. Um, so she approached me with this new plan and she, she came to one of our meetings back in August, I believe, and explain the, the plan to us, the proposal. And I was surprised at the savings where she said that for the, there's 13 employees, 21 employees and spouses are covered, and 12 of us are on Medicare. And by switching to that Benistar Hartford plan, we could save $7,943 a month for a total of $95,324.88 in our annual premium. Um, that's at 2023 rates. So when I got back to her last week, I, I asked, well, what, was our, what would our 2024 rates be? And they hadn't provided them to her. At, at, at that time, and we're waiting, so she's waiting to provide that to us. Um, Is the savings the same compatible savings? Well, it sounds like she indicated she, she thought the premiums were only going up about 5%. If that was the case, we'd still save about 90000 approximately. But I'd rather wait to see the, see the rates with the new... Uh, because uh, that that particular plan starts goes from January through December, and Medicare requires a 60, 60 days from the time we make application to when it can be affected. So that puts us at November first, and she's also looking at providing the paperwork that's needed for each employee to transition to the new plan effective which would be effective January 1, which we'd have to submit by November 1st. Now, there were you know, some concerns by some of the employees about pre-existing conditions, and she answered that. Um, and there's another concern pertaining to whether or not, as, as an employer, 
we have to require them to go to the, require <coughs> us to go to that plan. And, and the only thing I found is that the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission states that the fundamental principle of the and this pertains to discriminating against employees by in this case it would be age applies in the context as in all others if an employee provides a lower level of benefits to an individual based on a prohibitive factor which would be age it, Medicare is about age isn't it? Yeah <laughs> but okay, only if we were to provide a lower level of benefits it, and they've assured us that this plan is the same as what we currently have in terms of coverage. And I, I, I had asked her two months ago to give me a, uh, if there's anyone else on this plan in the state. And so I talked to somebody else at Burnham and Flower today, and they gave me, a, a, it's, the city was, it's called a Grove, Groveport City, up, it's a suburb outside of, Columbus with about 6,000 people and she said they have about 90 employees of which six to eight are on Medicare and they transitioned over to this plan last January 1. The only issues they had to start was because they have over 50 employees, they're, even though they were of Medicare age, their primary was Medical Mutual. So, and their employees pay a portion of their premium. So they, when they presented it to the employees, they said, hey, you know, you can save the city a considerable amount of money, and your premium will go down a, a proportion as well if, if they switch to this plan. And all, all eight employees switched. And, and as far as, as of uh, today, there have been no complaints pertaining to the coverage or claims that they've made or anything like that. So, okay, so when you say switch, that means that the <coughs> employer, Grove City or Grove Port, whatever, they had offered two different plans? They had some choice to make? Well, she she indicated to me it was all or nothing. So I, I don't, you know, well, when you say... Well, they still had two different plans. Yeah, yeah when you say they Oh, switched. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah they, had they had two different switched, plans. Yeah, they had the, the they main had medical other. plan for everybody and then and they had the, the special coverage for the people that are on Medicare. Yeah, it's we still have two plans. All right, let yeah. me ask you this question. Burnham and Flowers represents every township in the state, don't they? No. That's no. Not. They don't? A very large a lot, amount. A, lot. a large amount. Some there, big, uh, and, some, there's, and there's only one other place using well, this plan? That she gave me. That, yeah. Is there anybody in Joggett County on this plan? She besides? didn't say so. No. And just to bring this up, you... You asked her one time why we hadn't heard of this great savings before. She and said, she said she did. It just was never presented to us. Right. Did she present it to other townships in the, in here in Georgia? Well, according to this other person I talked to today, that's been her that's been her goal this year <clears throat> is to is to step up the Well, if everything I read and what she said, it's the same as what we have. Except the only difference is we're going to save a hundred thousand dollars. Who would not take that? Is there, you know, you know, I'll say if it sounds too good to be true, maybe it's not. So my question is, if it's the exact same that we're offering our employees right now, plus we're going to save a hundred thousand dollars, and there's only one other place doing this besides us. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, well, I'd like to know that. I mean, I would like to know, is there anybody else I mean, in Jog County? We have a quarterly dinner coming up. The whole thing does, I mean, does make absolute sense. First off, Medical Mutual, as far as I'm concerned, is just gouging uh, <coughs> Medicare. I get my Medicare statement, okay? And my Medical Mutual statement, it's like, okay, um, the bill was this much, Medicare approved it, and then uh, we also approved it. But since there's a deductible, we don't have to pay you anything. Here's your out of pocket. So that's all they do is they give you a piece of paper. They don't pay anything on it. They just tell us that, yep, this is what it is, and you end up paying it you know, out of our, uh, you know, we have a the, our, out of our account. But I, you know, I haven't seen anything like our prescriptions and things like that. We pay with our debit card here. It doesn't come out of medical mutual hands. So 
it would seem like, yeah, somebody, you know, if they're coming in here and they're giving us the same protection, it's not costing them all that much. They should be able to <laughs> lower the price. Well, I'm not arguing that. I'm just arguing that if it sounds that good, how come everybody isn't on it? I mean, I, who else did she present it to well, besides us? Well, you're only on it if you have employees that are over. Well, I'd be willing to bet if you go out throughout the well, Jogging County, they're all old, just like us. Yeah, I don't know if this percentage <laughs> goes everywhere, but um, yeah, we we are heavily into that. I, uh, I did talk to Janet Sugarman in, in Bainbridge, and and they don't uh, they don't have they have a different. Well, plan. I wouldn't. That'd probably be the last people I have. Bainbridge is uh, kind of a different plateau than the rest of us. I, mean, I think. Most townships are size and smaller and without time, or the bigger townships right. tend to go elsewhere because right. they can shop. They can do it, right? Yeah. But as Dan, you know, alluded to this, you know, this is time sensitive. If we're going to do it for this year, we've got to make the decision. Oh, uh, it's it's a bit, yeah. It and this like is our like last meeting of October. And if it's got deep done by the first, our next meeting is like our first. Fourteen, fifteen days left, and these questions could be answered. I mean, you know. And have a special meeting if we decide to go with it. Yeah, or join conditionally upon her coming and answering these questions. Which we what questions just, are we going to ask her? Well, you just brought one up. Right. Can't we just ask her that over the phone? Pre-existing. Can, well, can't Dan answer it? The questions one? are coming from the employees. What uh, employees? Uh, here and down there. Our work guys are asking questions too. There's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, okay, there, there's another another portion of this. I'll bring this up. Uh, you and I, we're on Medicare. Wives are on Medicare. We would then, all four of us, be on this plan. Now, if you're, your spouse if you're is on Medicare, younger, and, older, and you're not, right. then that's okay. But she is. Right. She will go on the new plan. Right. And you, as the younger employee, would go on, stay on the medical mutual. Right. And just the opposite of that. Right. If you're on Medicare. And she's not. And she's <coughs> not, then the employee has to stay on Medicare, even though they're collecting. Uh, has to stay on medical mutual. They have to stay on medical mutual. And so the rules are weird. I don't make them up. Where's the but just say right off the bat, that's going to take. Of the number of people we have, that's taken two of them out of the mix. Where does this woman work out of, Dan? Is she local? Columbus. <coughs> God, if we're saving ninety thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars, we could pay the difference. The one guy whose wife is younger. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, this stuff to me, you know, I'm still. As somebody that's on this plan, I just as soon stay with my because I don't like change, and I know somebody's out there to get me. <laughs> but you know, as a township trustee and our responsibility to you know take care of the funds here, you know, yeah. I think yeah. we seriously yeah. have to do whatever we can to try this, get this thing implemented by the beginning of next year. I agree. That's too pickleball for it. <laughs> I was thinking more along the lines of asphalt, but okay. <laughs> For the roads. That was just a suggestion. I hate people. If we're looking at places to put the extra money, you know. Here we can find something. Well, you know, I think it's typical that I've heard concerns from a few places up here. Um, I think it's typical for people to not ask questions or pursue it until the issues are right at hand. So if we move into this program, I think we need an employee meeting. Man. Yeah, I would say that would be. I'd like to have her come up. I think so. And you know, Nancy suggested that that uh, basically to talk to all of the employees that are on Medicare, so she can explain to them so they know what's going on. And again, I still like to get this moving. You know, if we have to have a special meeting, I'm not opposed to that. We just have to have a special meeting to decide whether or not we're going to go with it just so we can stay within well, the. Gene brought up a valid question. I think these two <coughs> employee spouses that would 
not be able to join in this program? How well, would that no, work? No, the, the, the employee spouses, they will, they will, they are currently on medical mutual. Yes. They will stay on medical they mutual. They will stay on medical the mutual. The only one that's being affected is that the uh, employee the will not go on to the new plan. The employee stays on medical mutual. So whatever we, for those, those two individuals, they're not affected at all. They stay with right where they're at. So that answers my question. Yes, we're going to offer two different options here. And how many people do we have? Well, that isn't an option. Well, we're going to pay for that other. For yeah. The, yeah. We're going to yeah, still but like I said, that's not an option. That's they, they have to. They have to do it according to that. That's that. we're not giving you the options. Like this is what you got. This is what you have to stay with. I'm not opposed to a special meeting with the employees in her. If, if, uh, I, I think that would be a good, good idea. I think it's it's um, significant in the savings, but it's also significant to a couple of these uh, employees absolutely. and their spouses, too. So. Set it up. Yeah. What day? How soon do we have to well, let's make get, a decision? Let's Anna? see what she can do. How, how soon do we have to make this decision? November 1st. November. If, if we want it to... Be effective January, January one, I which mean, I think we will. Every month we delay it because yeah. it's a sixty-day yeah. period. Well, we've got what? We have two weeks left yeah, in if, this if, month, if so we can get this done, then you know we could. Set. The thirtieth is two weeks off yet. Yeah, I mean we've got time. We set you know special meeting up. We set a meeting with her and the employees. Get all these questions answered. You want to do it during the day, during the evening? Well, the daytime if it's for the employees. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah I'd make it during the day. Okay. When do you want to do it, the 30th? Well, what do we got? We got the 23rd or the 30th, right? No, this employee meeting. Yeah. With, oh, with, let's see when she's available. All right. Yeah, and, call then, her. and then for us to, you know, get the change into effect, we could meet on the 30th. I'm not sure we actually, all three of us, need to be here. Maybe one of us should. For this employee meeting, yeah, I don't need to be here. We're pretty well versed on it. Um, we're pretty well versed on it. I, you know, I know where I think we should go with it, so I don't have to be so here. So that would not be a trustees meeting, right? It would be a trustee meeting would be for the benefit of our employees. So, yeah. uh, I mean, other places do things like that. We can yeah. do too. Okay, can we try to do that? Get that done? Yeah. Okay. I'll give her a call. Ask her what time during the day she could be. Okay, that's good. All right. Also, you got a guest. Slip in our guest here. Um, let's see if Dan's done here. Dan's got. Uh, yeah, I'm done. You're good. That's it. Okay. The previous years, up until uh, different interpretation, we used to. Applicants for our commission or our board, we would do an executive session and talk privately, but we've been advised not to do that anymore as of a couple of years ago. So, Mr. John Whitelock, John Whitelock, correct, is here and he is has an interest in serving on either a zoning commission or a zoning board of appeals. There are vacancies. Uh, coming up, positions to fill on the first of the year, uh, two alternates on commission, two alternates on zoning board of appeals, and a five-year term on the commission, as well as another five-year term on zoning appeals. Those are five members, and they stagger them one every year, so somebody's up every year. That's how that works. Uh, What's your professional business background that would be beneficial? Well, I've been involved with a lot of building activities. I've helped my, uh, I've worked with my, uh, a friend of mine who's got a, a building, a home building business. I'm actually helping him currently build a house over in Russell. Um, so that's not what I do for a profession, but uh, I've had a lot of exposure. I built my own home here, so I'm familiar with the permitting processes here. Uh, worked with Frank over the years. Uh, he actually was my cement guy back in the day. Um, so I don't know if I have the, uh, I don't have a civil engineering degree, but I am a mechanical engineer with a metallurgy background and uh, <coughs> been involved with uh, uh, this community for over 30 years. So okay. just feel like I feel like the need to get more involved with what's going on out here. 
Okay. And I will attest to the fact that he's a lot smarter than he looks. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> uh, any preference to which uh, the board or the commission? No, not really. I, I haven't done enough research to know the the, the the details of both of them individually, so I guess it would be more in two sentences. The commission writes the regulations and the board adjusts them <coughs> to hardship cases or appeals. So, you know, for reasons to have to leave the regulations. Uh, That's know. after Frank, after the zoning inspector makes his interpretation. So, uh, two distinctly different things. Uh, your case by case on board of appeals, but your you know, make, making the rules on overall the issue oriented. Yeah, on the commission here, right, and all the regulations. I would say that probably the appeals board would be more along the lines of what I would deal with. But whatever is well, necessary, take you take the other one if it was open. What, right? Whatever, whatever we need to have done here. Okay. Well, that you know, familiarity with the, with the process or the, the permit process is actually, I think, pretty important. You know, yeah, I've been through it before, so if you've done that, uh, you know, you got a leg up already. Any questions for us? Um, no, not really. It was sort of unexpected, so I. But yeah, it was a lot more comfortable to do this in a one out or three, you know, yeah, individual I can see setting. That, but but uh, uh, that's that's not the way it's laws are being interpreted now. So, well, it was uh, like Jane. I, we, I went, we met Jane. I met with Jane at the, the sale. And she said, hey, there's going to be an opening, there's some opening if you'd be interested. And then sort of let it float. And then she sent us an e sent my wife an email saying, hey, he needs a letter of intent. So then I started doing a little bit of research. I'm like, yeah, this thing's, this seems like something I should be, I could be involved with. So that's sort of what got me where I'm at right now. So, but Well, if something does come up and you're wondering about something or anything about it, you can call any of one of us individually or, you know. Or yell across the driveway and talk to me. Yeah, to see him almost every day. Well, I have sympathy for you. <laughs> <laughs> we also pick uh, two alternates in case someone can't make it or mm -hmm. have you. So. Yeah, generally, when you're starting out, uh, we like to get people into the alternate position. Uh, it's only a one year term. And basically, you have the same. You're doing all the same things, it's just you don't necessarily vote, uh, have voting rights at each of the meetings. But it gives you the opportunity to, you know, do it for a year and it's like, you know, this really isn't my, my cup of tea, so you can, you know, great, gracefully bow out and not have to uh, be committed to a five year term. Is that new? Well, currently, currently my travel schedule is pretty. Nothing, so compared to what it used to be. Yeah, here, here, here. back to real. And yeah. Just John, among as many metallurgical jobs, is uh, he spent a lot of time tra traveling to China for the working with the uh, founders. Founders. So all over the world, actually. So. Yeah. And so he'd be gone weeks at a time. But <coughs> his current career keeps him in town. So yes. No, that's what she decided I wanted to put off for her next year. Yeah, she wanted to get the. Uh, There's some new form they're doing or something. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to go over the. Uh, uh, they started the paperwork for the levy, uh, but <coughs> prosecutor's office is a little backed up. Uh, she's working on projects, so. Um, we, want, we want to get her totally involved in this, so we make sure everything is. Uh, and so we, we're putting that off till until the next meeting. Until she's fully engaged here. Yeah. There's some kind of new form that was mentioned. That I think it's from the board of, uh, from the board of elections.
All right. Thank you. Nice to meet you, John. And uh, you know, we'll make those appointments first of the year. Do that at the organizational meeting at the beginning of the year in January. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to contact me through the office, I guess. You'd be able to get all So I got an email, so. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, if you want to go home bed, go to bed, you can. Yes, I will. I will bow out. Yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's another one like me that gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to work. <clears throat> Okay, no real update on the NOPEC grant. We're still uh, doing some research to find an Apple project. Uh, the speed study, I believe, is underway on Taylor Mag. And that will take, uh, I will probably have some type of recommendation, I would think, in this, over the winter, December, January. Uh, we're having the engineer's office assess the speed limit on Taylor May Road from 44 to 1, I believe, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. We're just going to go to Auburn and they wanted to do the entire stretch over to, over to Monroe. Right now I think it's 45. Uh, there's some neighbor concerns over there that maybe it should be slightly less, but that's not up to us to make that determination. That's the engineer's office, and there's a process, and we started it, so that's what's going on. All right, no PEC. Uh, we've been sending Nancy <coughs> Dolezal as our proxy to the General Assembly meeting. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that we... Point Nancy Dolezal is our I'll second proxy for that meeting. PJ? Yes. G? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Dan just gave me this that came, I guess, in the mail today. Yeah, applications for a new Type C liquor license for the pond. Ice rink. Drinking and hockey does not mix. <laughs> I've been told otherwise, actually. <laughs> I think it's required. <laughs> uh, this is uh, from the Department of Liquor Control and would we want a hearing? You must within 30 days of the mail date listed on the notice. Notify if they want a, we want a hearing or something else. Uh, or an extension. I don't know. In the past we would make a quick call to the sheriff's office. Is there any issue? And usually we get a quick answer in the way of it. Want to do the same thing here? Yeah, I'd like to hear from the sheriff's department. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What did he ask? Is there being any fights at a hockey rink? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That's a that's a new one too. Well, they put that little restaurant or whatever I think upstairs. Or they're upstairs. I told her forget the restaurant and put pickleball courts on that outside <laughs> thing. Some of these, I'm not sure what the process. I haven't seen a new one. Have you seen a new one in a long time? I can't think of one. No, I didn't think there was a... Uh, uh, what's that, liquor? Uh, yeah, a new one. Did we ever see the one that right Jason on. got? I never saw that. No. No. Cerna got one for the farm market, because those are, those are uh, permitted, you know. Yeah, that's for... He's got a carry-out, right? Well, the farm market down at 44, I know, sells down there, too. Yeah, but that's, that's carry-out. Yeah. I know he's got wine coolers and beer for carry-out and uh, consumption at the restaurant. For a while there, we were getting a bunch of transfers in. But I, I, I don't know. There's some referendum procedure on this, too. Uh, on a liquor license, because every once in a while it's on ballot somewhere. We haven't had one here. I can't remember one. All right, well, we'll check with the sheriff. And there you go. Are they asking for carry-out or just on uh, It's type C, Debbie, so I'm not sure what that... Do you know what that is, type C? 
I don't either. I can, I can find out. Yeah, we can find out. We'll do that. So that's the bottom of the agenda. Um, what's this? Uh, they're going to hold a seminar on broadband. Oh, Bainbridge's. Well, they're that's hiring next month. For the whole county and Portage County. That's next month. The second? Huh? Is it the second? Uh, yeah, November 2nd. Yeah. This would be for stakeholders in Jaga and Portage counties. Yeah, I have some interest in going there. We, we did some chasing after the convention last year, and we got absolutely nowhere. Okay. But, uh... I'll, I'll make a copy of this and send it to our friends in Manly. <coughs> for everybody to go or just the trustees? Uh, read it that, again. She asked what that's for. Uh, that good afternoon. Our uh, state rep and Bainbridge trustee O'Brien are hosting a seminar on broadband, specifically how local stakeholders can bring broadband to their communities with Broadband Ohio at Centerville Mills, Bainbridge, beginning at 11 o'clock on Thursday, November 2nd. This would be for stakeholders in Jaga and Portage counties. They would like to invite you to attend. They would also like you to ask for your assistance. Would you be willing to help reach out and invite other local leaders and stakeholders, such as Jaga and Portage County trustees, uh, to attend. Your help would be greatly appreciated. This is from Brandon Agnew, legislative aide to State Rep. Steve Demetrio. Steve Demetrio. Demetrio. Uh, I'd assume that's open to the public. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Think so? Well, it says local leaders. I would imagine it would be more did. set for trustees or people that are uh, I don't know, in a position to do something. Like that. I don't know if they can actually yeah. close so Clarification on the uh, Type C liquor license C1 uh, permits the sale of beer in the original sealed container for carryout. <coughs> C2 allows uh, sale of wine and mixed beverages in sealed containers for carryout. Oh, all right, we'll call the sheriff. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Anybody have anything else? Up there? Up there? Yes, thank you, PJ. Yes, thank you, PJ. Uh, under old business, the uh, NOPEC energizing grant, energizing grant unused balance, is there a uh, specific arena where that balance can or cannot be spent in the township? Mm -hmm. It's got to be spent for energy-related energy items. Like yeah. the generators that we get. Or the furnace that we put in here, some lighting projects that we've done. It's got to be related to, to that. Energy. Yeah. Energy. Okay, thank you. Like lighting up the pickleball courts. Lighting up the park for energy. Anybody else? Going <coughs> once, going twice. Um, the the eye work, uh, the warrant for the eye work, um, uh, whatever that was. I think you, yeah, eighty forty eight. Um, is that a little business? The eye work. That's for software for the zoning. That's for, so the for software. the zoning department. <coughs> I'm sorry for what? For the zoning department. That's their software, I guess, that they use. Ah. Is that, is that new or is that renewed every year? Well, we, we did uh, purchase it last year, same price. So I'm, I guess, I'm guessing it's a subscription. Okay, probably, yeah. Annual okay. licensing. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, okay. Usually those are for a year, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I'm looking for a motion. So moved. Second. PJ? Yes. Gene? Yes. Mike? Yes. 